Oh, you just don't know how funny this is. Just trying to find a place to record. Uh, anyway, welcome to Buster's World. And, uh, I am Buster, your host. Um, I was trying to record at home and and um, my granddaughter was out of sorts. And so I went out to the car and rolled the window down. Kids started riding by the window. Oh, fly got in and wouldn't stay off my face. Um, I was going to go sit up in the garage. My wife was sitting in the garage and she was sitting there reading. And she was like, okay. So here we are trying to start this again. Um, I've just wasted 40 seconds of your time talking about my problems. But hey, it's all good. It's all good. Um, anyway, um, have you ever given much thought um, to where this all ends up at? I mean this, I mean this life. Where's this all leading? Um, a number of years ago, I owned a business, um, a homeland security business. And uh, while we were putting together the, uh, the business plan before we did anything else, one of the things that we did first was to put together a strategic vision for our, our uh, business. And uh, for those of you who've never had to put together a business plan or never had to develop a strategic vision for either the company you work for, um, basically what a strategic vision is, it's the uh, high arching goal, the overall vision for where you would like to see your business go. Where do you see it when this is all said and done, at least in the business sense, where it's all said and done? Um, are you starting a business to ultimately sell it? Are you starting it to make money? Um, are you starting to serve a you know deep moral uh, purpose in the world? You know why are you doing what it is that you're doing? And um, as I uh, as I was thinking about this topic, I was uh, my mind was drawn to you know what is the strategic vision for my life? And, um, you know, a lot of times we don't give it a second thought, you know, the way that we live our life from day to day, where's this all going to end up at? Um, last week, my wife and I, we were on a drive up in the Texas Hill Country and we were taking pictures of, of wildflowers and we drove by this, uh, um, this, uh, Cemetery that had graves going back to the uh, oh, mid mid 1800s, which was fairly early for Texas, because that part of Texas in the mid 1800s was uh, um, you know still had a Native American control, and settlers were still you know um, engaging with uh, with with local Native tribes not in a pleasant way, and um, so it was an interesting uh, stop. But anyway, the thing that drew us there was that the uh, the cemetery was covered in blue bonnets. And I took a few pictures of that in my uh, my um, video that I'll be doing this later this week on um, on uh, Texas wildflowers. Uh, you'll get a chance to uh, to see that that picture. But anyway, you know often we don't think about the end until we lose somebody. Um, perhaps you've lost a parent or a sibling. Um, I've lost both friends, lost friends, starting to get to that stage in my life where I'm losing more and more friends. And, um, and it's at times and moments like that, that, um, the reality of mortality is, is that none of us are getting out of this life alive. Um, there's been very, very few, at least from a biblical standpoint, that have been able to cheat death. We're not going to talk about them in this video. Um, but um, we're all going to die. Um, at 62 years of age, which is what I'll be, um, yesterday I said next month, but it's actually the middle of June. Um, I'm probably in the final, <laughs> I'd like to say the final third but my uh, family's DNA is not very good. So maybe the final 
20 or 30 percent of my life and um, I've uh, I've raised a family and even my grandchildren are starting to get to the age where they're graduating from uh, getting ready to graduate from high school and head off to college here in the next year or two and um, so it gets you thinking um, I remember when my father was it was a stage and uh, and my father's now um, and I was um, he passed in 2015 and um, he was at this stage of life in around 2004 when I was doing that homeland security business that we were talking about so if I followed his course you know I could I could have another 14 15 years you just never know I could you know today could be the last day and if that's the case, then uh, you might want to save this video. It may be worth something someday. You never know. Um, but anyway, we're all going to die. And uh, with that in mind, I, you know, if, if, if I, I, I was thinking about, um, I was given some thought about uh, strategic visions for life. And um, if you were going to write a strategic vision for your life, what would it be? Or better yet, if somebody else has already written the perfect strategic vision for your life, would you want to know it? Um, would you want to know that if you set this one strategic vision up for your life, that it would anchor you in truth and help you to make wiser and better decisions that lead to peace, joy, and happiness in this life. Well, you know, there is such a vision, believe it or not. Um, in the Pearl of Great Price, Moses 1, chapter 39, um, the Father in heaven says, Behold, this is my work and my glory, to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. Well. Wow. Think about that. This is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. Well, if that's the case, with God being our creator, and the sole purpose of his work, his overall strategic vision for his children is to bring to pass their immortality and eternal life. Could there be anything greater? Can you imagine that if you're if you're anchored to something less than that? You know, I read the news every day and I see people who are anchored or unanchored. They're like they've they've like they set themselves upon the ocean without sail, without anchor, without rudder, without paddles, and they just take themselves where the current takes them. Wherever it takes them. Whether it's uh, crashing upon the shores or into a storm or, or out to sea away from land where they will not be able to get food, water, or sustenance. They live their lives by the seat of their pants without any clear idea of where they're going. Um, I see it in the news every day. You see it in the news every day. The sad stories of humanity. And it is just so dark, so dark and so sad. And uh, there's going to be a price to be paid for living our lives that way. It's one thing when one person lives their life that way. It's quite another thing when an entire society has taken up the, the, uh, the tenet that they are gods, that there is no God, that they are gods, and they get to, they get to, to um, whatever it is that they conjure up in their mind. <sighs> Whatever it is that they conjure up in their mind is truth. And then they write their own gospel saying that because this is my truth, you need to adjust your truth to live within my truth. And if you can't live within my truth, I don't want to have any part of you. I'm going to silence you. Now, doesn't it make sense that the world just doesn't work that way? Life doesn't work that way. How could you have 8 billion people on the planet and 8 billion different versions of truth? How does that even make sense? Well, it doesn't make sense. See, I know that there's a God. I know with every fiber of my being, I've walked with him for the vast majority of my adult life. 
and he has revealed himself to me in, in a variety of ways um, almost daily over the course of that journey. Doesn't it make sense that if there is a God, that he would have created laws, rules that would lead to your happiness? He's a father. He's not a stranger. He's a father. And he loves you. And he wants you to be happy. And he wants you to make decisions that will lead to your happiness. Why would he go off and place you in this world without any ideas about how to be happy? Well, he didn't do that. He gave us prophets. He gave us apostles. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, in the meridian of time to give us the truths that we would need, that if we would live by them, we could obtain peace, joy, and happiness in this life. And we would be able to fulfill his plan for us in the eternities, which is to have eternal life. One set of rules, eight billion different sets of rules. To me, that just makes sense. So I know that, um, that in order for our Father in Heaven to make that plan happen, He gave us His Son, Jesus Christ. Um, my best friend. I've always been amazed that He can have as deep and as personal a relationship with me and that He would have time for anybody else. But He does because I talk to other people who have a relationship with Christ and, he, and they, they say the same thing. He's their best friend. He guides them, he directs them, he comforts them when they make mistakes. He helps them to rise above their mistakes or challenges. He heals and purifies their soul. He provides joy and peace, light and knowledge and truth continuously. He does that for me. He does that for so many people that I know. And, and I, by many of the things that I've seen, he does it for anybody who is willing to come unto him I love John 3, 16, where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Think about that. My goodness, isn't that wonderful? But even more importantly, for those who go off and say, God is a God of hate and he's anger. No, there is. We're not going to have time to go into the whole plan of salvation today. We're just talking about strategic vision. If your strategic vision is God's strategic vision for you, think about where that would lead you. Think about if, if, if everlasting life in the presence of God, having that as your strategic vision and every decision you made in life, Every decision you made in life was attached to how is this decision going to help contribute to that strategic vision I have for my life? How simple is that? Especially when he's given you the playbook, how to do it. Anyway, in verse 17 of John chapter 3, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the world, or but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come into the world that the world might be condemned. Every single person in mortality, regardless of who you are, the mistakes that you've made, wherever it is in your state of journey, whether you have rejected God from the very first second that you came into mortality, regardless of the mistakes that you've made, you could find yourself in prison or you could find yourself in a mansion, which could be a prison to you. Regardless of where you are and your standing in life, he did not come to condemn you, but he came to the world that he might save you. Now, to be saved means you have to change your life. You have to come unto Christ, confess your sins, learn what his laws are, and try to put your life in alignment with his. 
it involves a process called repentance, which is a joyous process whereby we release ourselves from the burdens of sin and become changed through the atonement of Jesus Christ. In verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is why. He's not condemning you. You are condemning yourself for this reason. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Yes. Your deeds will be reproved because as soon as you come into the light, you're going to see the darkness within you. Your guilt is going to grow within your bosom. And the one thing that Christ wants to do is to take that guilt out of you and make you a saint of his and to bring you into his presence where he might be able to teach and instruct and mentor you and help you achieve that strategic vision that our Father in heaven has set forth for his children. Because he that doeth light, or he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest. Let me go off and say that again, boy, I tell you, I'm sorry. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. A lot of times uh, for some of you who may interact with other, other people who are Christians, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm a disciple of Christ, a son of God. And um, I've entered into a covenant with my Father in heaven that I would love him and serve him and keep his commandments. One of the reasons I created this channel is that I might be able to testify of Christ, talking about the experiences of my life and uh, hoping that those experiences might lead other people to truth. Now, it's, uh, it, it may seem like it's a, it's a big stretch to be able to, to change your life. Or you might even wonder, it's like, well, the very thought that there could be a God is beyond and above my ability to, to even grasp onto it. And that's fine. That's fine. Um, but what I would ask you to do, that if you want to know whether or not these things that I'm talking about are true, there is a way. And it starts with coming unto Christ being able to understand that he lives. I've included a link um, in this, um, in, this uh, in the description uh, box for this video where you can come and you can, you can do those things. You can go and learn more about Christ and begin your journey with him. Um, it is a step-by-step -step time, but I, I will tell you what, he will reveal himself to you as you make a decision to turn your life over to him. Um, like I said, you know, the kingdom of God on earth is not the kingdom of man. It is different. It operates by different, different principles and different doctrines. Doctrines that are established by a God, not man. I testify to you, um, my fellow Americans, my, my uh, brothers and sisters, that we are, we are all children of the same God. Whether you be black or white, doesn't make a difference. I don't care what faith you are. We are all children of the same God, and he loves us, and he wants us to be happy, and uh, he wants to see us united and as one. But I cannot unite with the world. I just can't. Um, I've been asked by my Savior to become one with him in the same way that he is one with the Father. I can't be one with you. I can't be one with the world, a world that goes off and believes that there is no moral compass, that there is no right or wrong, that each man gets to choose his own path. When I do believe 
that each is afforded the right to choose his path, but you cannot choose the consequences of the decisions that you make. You will die someday. Death is coming. It may be soon or it may be far down the road, but it is coming. And every decision that you've made in this life will be brought to account, whether they be good or whether they be evil. My hope is, is that the next time you drive by a graveyard, go spend some time sitting there thinking about the lives of those that lived. Look at the the time and the seasons that they were born and envision the trials and challenges of their generation and recognize that they are still alive, that when they died, they were brought up out of the grave, their spirit was, and that it went back to that father who sent it here into mortality. you'll review every experience that you've had in life and you're going to do it in the presence of a glorious wonderful merciful kind beautiful being but if you have chosen to live and to accept and to become dark and to become evil to have fought against God and rejected his words you will not be able to live where he lives and enjoy the life that he enjoys and that is an eternal life with eternal joy but you will have sealed your fate but because of the decisions that you've made not because of the decisions that god made but because of the decisions that you've made you will seal your fate so i would encourage you that if you haven't made the decision already to accept the strategic vision. Behold, this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man, that you will come unto Christ, that he might be able to help you fulfill that vision for your life, is my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say this, amen. Anyway, Thank you for stopping by today. I hope you found value and purpose in, um, in this video. Um, I look forward to producing many more videos like this as we get further down the road. I hope you have a great day and uh, check back in from time to time as I produce more content. Thank you. Bye.